hello to you all wherever you may be on this galactic rock flying through space we are freedom central broadcasting to you live on finding voices radio and we welcome you to our show my name of course is mel v and i'll be your host for the next few hours and what a delight it is to be with you all this evening so much to tell you and catch up on so much going on well 2013 has certainly taken off with a blast and the world our fringe media is buzzing with lots going on of course over the last few weeks we have been discussing the possibility of our freedom being at hand with the work being done by the one people's public trust it certainly has brought some amazing individuals to the woodwork and we are delighted and to be meeting one of those tonight actually let me give them a ring and bring them in to speak to us as i said just wonderful people coming out the woodwork thanks to the work being done by oppt hello hello kirsty hello how are you doing i'm very well thanks hi is dean there he is he's right here by, right by me you're wonderful <laughs> hello dean Hello. Hello, lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, of course, just want to quickly introduce you both. I've already done a brief introduction. Um, Dean G. Allen, PhD, uh, has written some wonderful books. Uh, and of course, I was contacted by Kirsty Knight, who um, just brought this gentleman to my attention. I've looked into your stuff and really intriguing. And you've been doing this for a while. And I'm so, I just must just tell you that it's very seldom I get approached by such wonderful people such as yourselves through putting out interviews. I was absolutely honored after I got off the phone, uh, got off Skype with you guys and started looking at your work and I was, wow. The power of the OPPT to bring such wonderful people to me to disclose such fantastic information. I am truly honored and privileged to have you on our show. So thank you both for joining us live on Finding Voices Radio this evening. And um, Freedom Central, very much looking forward to our interview with you. Oh, thank you so much. We're, it's an honor to be here, Melanie. Well, I first wanted to, uh, before we get into all the information, um, I was hoping you could put us into a little bit of context of how you discovered uh, me how, and, and, and with regards to OPPT so people can understand. Well, I, I loved your interview with Heather and it just blew me away because your response to the OPPT was the same as mine. It was, I think all spirits felt it. It was like a, the shot heard around the world to a lot of us because it was like, oh my gosh, this is it. Somebody blew through all of that legalese, you know, language that was meant to deceive us from getting at the truth. And I've long known that that energy, you know, there's two energies in the universe. One is the black hole energy that sucks the light, sucks the stars. That's its job. It breaks things down. And then there's the spirit, which is the sun, the light. You can't unsee it once you've seen it. It's very, very bright. It feels a certain way. It vibrates a certain way. And you and I vibrate on the same level of heart. Melanie, I hear your, your interviews and your responses are so much like mine. I love listening to you. Oh, wow. But, Thank you. But basically, you know, the, the dragon is what we call the electrical, what's the uh, drag on spirit life force energy, also works in the body. And I'm sitting here going, oh, my gosh. Before we start doing and being, we need to know how to do that. And right now there's a lot of confusion around that. And that shouldn't surprise you, Melanie, because you know how this you know, world is set up. It, it's basically set up to suppress energetic reality and keep everybody confused so that we can remain slaves. Yes. Do you know, I'm so, oh wow, I'm tingling as you're speaking. You know how many people have been saying to me, yes, it's all very good and well to hear OPPT going on about doing and being. Now, how do we manifest that? And, 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 and you've come to me with information. Because he knows that there's a, a massive confusion going on. Now, you introduced Dean. Dean I'm going to just tell you a little bit more about him before he gets started to answer that. I'd love and that. Brilliant. Like, he used to be like the anti-aging secret to the stars. He lived in Hollywood. A few of them found him. You know, a uh, uh, Ford model, Louise Hay, who was also Hay House Publishing. Um, you know, Bruce Lipton. You know, some people found Dean and because he was like one of the first uh, teachers of consciousness in college just then. In well, the well, college then level. In science. Toward the, the, the 70s. The big, the big difference here is science. The science of consciousness, which is what he calls the psychology of consciousness, which in, includes science, because he was one of the pioneers in, with Elmer Green in biofeedback. Um, you know, he's, he's done a lot of work on studying what's been going on with, uh, 
you know, there was a lot of scientific studies that came out of the Nagasaki, Hiroshima H-bombs. Those people were degenerating, you know, so, so fast. And trying to figure that out brought us to something, what we call the organ gland language. And basically, it starts with the most important one to your survival, which is the thymus. It's what tells us on an emotional level uh, what is safe and what is unsafe if spirit life force energy is running through those circuits for the thymus. Now, if you don't have the spirit life force running through that and it's been shut down by the drag on spirit life force, um, what will happen is you will not know who is safe and who is unsafe in your world. And that will affect your immune system because we're a whole system. Whatever happens spiritually, it's passed down to the mental world, and we got to get that right so that we can understand our emotions, so that we can understand what's making us sick or what's making us rejuvenate. And now we finally have the key to understand that it's always been there, and it's what we call the language of the body, and that's what Dean teaches. It's scientific. It, you know, it just erases. It's like the sun, you know, when it shows up in your life and you know through his machine called the Body Talker, which is just a mirror image of what uh, circuits are flowing and not flowing in you, then he can, you know, find out where the drag is on which organ and gland. And each organ and gland has its own specific, unique language that will feed back to you. And once you know this language, you can diagnose yourself. You can say, oh my gosh. I've got a, uh, a colon issue, you know, if I don't keep, uh, if I don't stop getting rid of what is toxic to me on an on a, on emotional level, then my life is going to continue to stink and I'm going to back up and I'm going to have colon issues over a long period of time. And that's what the language is. That's what we mean by the language. So I'm going to turn this over to Dean now because he's the expert and the humble man. He needed somebody who really thinks a lot of him too. <laughs> Introduce him. Wow, that, that's a wonderful introduction, Dean. I don't think you can. Do, I could do much better than that. <laughs> I, I, I'm a lucky man. So. <laughs> I can't see, Melanie, why the CVAX would need to understand this. Before. We start tr making decisions all yes. over the world about doing and being? Yes, absolutely. And I, this is so wonderful. This information is so needed right now. Um, you know, it's absolutely fantastic that you got in touch with me and thank you for this. So, Dean, I, you know what? This is such a broad spectrum of information. I really have no idea where to start with this. So I'm going to let you climb well, in. Well, I, I thought a lot about that last night. And uh, I, I think that the only place that we can really start is we got to get, really get down to basics here. And this is the essence of what I've learned in following this work now for almost 40 years. And the last 25 years, I've had uh, infrared science to track thousands of individuals to try and figure this out because that's what that's what I essentially got into this field for, is to figure out what's going on between the mind and the body. And I didn't have a science except for biofeedback initially. Biofeedback is not specific enough to give us the information that we need. Uh, infrared, when you can track every circuit between every organ and gland, and then start tying in the uh, energy motion or emotional issues, for each one and then track an individual and show them in their life where and when and how and who they're doing this or that with. The drag on <laughs> spirit life force. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden it starts coming together and they can perform. Wow. Okay. It's a regenerative pattern rather than a degenerative pattern. Yes. And they can do it consciously, which is the path to ascension. <laughs> wow. So what you're saying is this is conscious anti-aging. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There, yeah, that. See, there isn't any other choice. If you don't do it consciously, you do it unconsciously. And if you do it unconsciously, you're going to do it on past reactive memory. And if you do it on that, you're going to go backwards. And then you're going to be in defense. And then you're going to have to degenerate and, and then have to deal with that. See, one problem creates another problem, which creates another problem. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's bring it back to basics first, Dean. Let's talk about um, the problems that most of us have to deal with in day-to-day -day life, predominantly fear-based problems. Right. Okay. Okay. Fear, fear is, first of all, the primary, uh, the dragon's primary emotion. And I think we need to start here before we can start anywhere else. The universe itself is set up as two energies. 
and we see it in, in various forms. The, the most obvious one is the galaxy itself. And every galaxy is centered by a black hole, and the black hole is this magnetic energy, a pulling energy, that when it pulls something into it, it reduces it to its most basic form by pulling it apart, which is hydrogen, and spews out light. And the same thing is true of humans. There is two basic energies, the dark energy and the light energy. That's, that's what the Star Wars movie was all about. Yeah. And this is why we become strong, because we've been exposed to this energy, and that's the game. That's what we call the energy game. Wow. So learning to play this game is critically essential because without it, you don't know how to play the game you're forced to play every day, whether you know about it or not. And this is where most humans are right now. <laughs> this is why we wanted to share this with you. And it's coming right along the time, you know, Heather cut through the language, got to the clean spot, and now we're coming into clean energy and a clean understanding of things. And this will be what I consider because it's the body it's the body's own divine template of knowledge of how the spiritual and natural laws of energy work within us as 253 circuits of light because that is what each human being is this this is what we all have in so if we can if we can center our consciousness around who we are and how we function energetically and then start put the pieces together in our life and what's going on you see how our performance you know transcends it will improve dramatically which is why you know there were so many hollywood stars that wanted dean for their their well this is what i've had a unique opportunity to see is thousands of people going through this one day at a time one session at a time for 25 years now trying to find energetic reality well, and as soon as they did, they their performance went way up. They were suddenly believable and real. <laughs> That's what the game of life is all about, as you well know, Malfi. Yes, yes, indeed. Wow, that's incredibly interesting. Now, uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, how we use the darkness to evolve uh, into light. Well, we don't use the darkness so much as we perceive the darkness, and perceiving the darkness allows us to get ahead of it. First of all, let me give us give everyone some basic language here that I've learned over 40 years with clients. You've got to reduce it to something that they can relate to. So I am familiar with working with individual people, so maybe that'll help. Yeah. Uh, the language is seven words. And remember I told you there were two energies, the dark energy and the light energy, or whatever you want to call it, has yeah. many different yeah, many different names. But the but one is made up. One one is a magnetic pulling energy that basically goes backwards. In 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 electricity, electromagnetics, you you familiar with that, I think everybody is. Yeah. Well, that's the two energies right there. One is electro, which is radiating energy, it's pushing. Like the sun, the light. Mm -hmm. And the other one is magnetic, which is pulling. And when you put like them together and time them right and get the right timing, it gives you power. And that's all of our power. That's where it comes from. Okay, so is this why we've got the Ida and Pinyata, the two different energy fields that run through our body? That's Yes. Right. Okay. Now, that, now, when people start to understand that they have entirely different properties and that they both act and react upon every organ and gland, then you start based to understand. On their, based on their memory and their, their, their history traumas. and programming. Yeah. Because the dragon is basically all of our traumas going back thousands of years, you know, whatever's shown up in our trauma DNA, memory, that's you know, what it is. to remember. And when we remember the members of our bodies to the light, rather than just stay as a black hole in our unconsciousness, or what, you know, for thousands of years, they've used the dragon to describe it because it's the dragon spirit life force energy. And they put the dragon in the cave, which represents unconsciousness. You know, Dean, you ought to, you ought to tell that story. Okay, the so the cave lake inside. Uh, this, this, we'll get it. this is more of the basic information. Because, see, until you get all of these things in your mind so you can see what's really happening, you won't see them. Yeah. Okay. So, what I've learned, another thing, and this is what I've used with clients also, 
is what I call the evolutionary path of the dragon because uh, uh, the challenge in life is really to evolve our dragons and our dragons is our trauma memory and the reason trauma memory is so important is it makes unconscious decisions before we even know what's happening and that's the dragon in the cave and you see you see the problem with that <laughs> I love this you know, I'm absolutely obsessed with dragons. Both my husband and I are born in the year of the dragon, so we're just loving this. Uh, this is funny. Uh, well, that brings us to this year, which is the dragon, um, the water dragon. And the, we call the middle uh, evolution of the dragon is the dragon in the lake. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay, so there's these three levels uh, uh, that, that everyone has to evolve their dragons through. And the first level is what we call the dragon in the cave and it's in total darkness. Uh, it's uh, totally reactive to light. Um, uh, it's not safe to go into the cave with the dragon. Yeah, so if you're the light and you're going into the cave, <laughs> that is like what we call suicide. Yeah, Don't a, do it. That's a suicide First mission. First thing so we tell people in the, the only not The only real choice you have is you have to get the dragon out of the cave, and the only thing that gets the dragon out of the cave is well successfully is love and light and it's an equal measure of both love and light now what light is is truth and what truth is is the laws of energy or what we call energetic truth yeah and everything is energy so uh you know it basically everything comes down to light and if you notice the first two rows in the uh periodic table of chemistry are hydrogen and then everything else is various levels of compaction of hydrogen. That's why in the black hole, when it, any mass goes into it, it comes out as light, which is hydrogen. So bring that dragon back into the lake now. He's gone yeah. out of the So, so, so now, light. if you get the dragon out of the cave, it goes into the lake, and the lake is uh, symbolized as emotions. That's what water is. It's, it's the symbol for emotions, and emotions is how we feel or experience life. Now, how we process the, yeah. Now the primary issue there is safety, because if we don't feel safe, we can't even operate offensively. This is what Heather's talking about. You know, you show up. You know, that's this is the big issue that, you know, that that you know. You be who <laughs> you are as spirit. You know. But it's a lot bigger issue then just do it, you know, the Bob Newhart therapy is just do it, you know. Well, <laughs> it, Stop it. it isn't, that, that's where I started laughing, you know, because I, there's a much bigger picture and it's our own programming and our own issues. And if we don't even know how that works and we don't have any individual feedback on our own programming, oh, God help us. And yet our body was our own divine feedback system if we knew what the language was. And this has been kept from us for thousands of years. We ran into a guy that, uh, he approached me and he says, has Dean been paid off yet? And I said, what do you mean paid off? And he says, oh, when, you know, people understand what this is, you know, because he was apparently in the CIA and knew that this existed. And, you know, Dean and several others have, you know, rediscovered this. Well, it, it hasn't, it has It's always been around. It's the body's language. The, the body's language has always been around. Uh, uh, what this does is this scientifically, first of all, measures it, and then uh, decodes it so that we can see uh, what decisions we're making and how that relates to the problems in our lives. Because it'll, it'll always line up. See, so it's it's really connecting the dots, filling in the pieces, and allows us to get further ahead of the of the curve. So all of these emotional issues in the lake that we're dealing with on this evolutionary path of the dragon, all of these issues is all of our programming and us becoming conscious enough that in our moment of power, which is about five tenths of a second from the stimulus, which is uh, where where our power is, uh, the decisions that we make within that time frame, whether they're coming from our past reactive programming, 
which will be defensive and will never get us any points, or if we're conscious enough to take a deep breath, breathe into the present, be here now, say to the banks or whoever, are, are you sure you're justified in asking what you're asking for? You see how simple it is? Do you want to be personally liable at this point? <laughs> and we do it not only with love, but light. And see, this is exactly what Heather's teaching. And because I, if we don't do it with light, which is the energetic truth, and get them to know that they're now, from now on, and henceforth, personally liable for their actions, then uh, we will just use love, and everybody loves love. You know, dragons love love. Dragons in the cave love love, you know. Yeah. But what you got is, you got to understand that the dragon is, well, you go ahead and explain. Well, okay, so we're, we're still in the lake, and you see, you see why we're stuck in the lake, because that's where everyone's stuck. They don't know what the emotions mean. See, and, and, and if you can't get ahead of these emotions, then you're going to be behind them. And that's, you know, that's not surfing anymore, you know, that's surviving. So this, this stage of consciousness that we're going through right now, you know, as of the uh, end of 2012, um, is into the light. They call it the age of enlightenment, the age of Aquarius, the new millennium. Now. It's, 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 it's called many different things, but it's coming into the light. Which is the dragon in the sky. Right. As the more light shines, the more we shine the light on the darkness, then the dragon has to evolve because it can't unsee the light. So it goes, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be serving you a summons in a system that is a slavery system. <laughs> maybe I need to be free, too. Are you telling me that I could get out of my, my, my mortgage as well? See, see what? Because it wasn't there in the first place? Now, notice what Heather is really talking about, personal responsibility. That's what she's talking about. You know, take responsibility for your life. Show up. Uh, this is what I've been telling clients for years. Bottom line is you got to show up. And then the question is, well, what is show up? What does that mean? Well, I can tell you scientifically exactly what it means. It means each of your organs and glands have 23 simultaneously inputs into your life in terms of what's happening. Now, the issue is, are you conscious of it? Do you know what they are? Do you pay any attention to them? And then, do you follow them? And this is all she's talking about. But what I'm trying to point out here is it's a much bigger picture than just do it. You see? Yes, I do. Okay, elaborate a bit on that. Yeah, well, you got the thymus, which is basically teaches you what is safe and unsafe. It, the thymus has an emotion, and it's, it's safety. And I know it sounds like a strange emotion, but it's a feeling that mm. says, oh, I'm safe, I know I'm safe, I'm in loving arms, you know, this is right where I'm supposed to be, right here, right now. It's a feeling. And then the unsafe feeling you would get if the spirit life force energy is flowing through the thymus. And you would not be able to feel under any circumstances safe if you were blocked or partially blocked in the thymus. Um, the, what I found from working with clients for 40 years, bottom line that everybody needs before they can move forward is they need to feel safe and worthy of love. That's it. <laughs> and, and so true. I mean, just common sense that, that you know that rings true. And yeah. you know where it affects us on the physical level because we're all a whole integrated being, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, is it affects our immune system mm. and the number one cause of death. Uh, the wow. the Stephen Worthy of Love is the first two organs uh, in in the order of importance, and it's the thymus and the heart. And it's, it's feeling safe enough to protect yourself. The emotion is actually aggression. And uh, feeling worthy of love so that you can open up and connect and uh, enter into trust. And so the thymus teaches us to exercise the appropriate level of aggression to shine enough light on the you know, the drag on, on the spirit life force and the thymus, which, you know, it'll always try to make you feel And, and see, this this is where the memories, uh, our, our own personal history, our own trauma memories come into play because the way the system is wired and programmed is 
uh, for, for survival, for protection, uh, which is the dragon programming, is reaction. And reaction is very effective in a life-threatening situation because it requires, no, it requires no thought. And so it can be performed instantly. And that's good if you're in a life-threatening situation if you're trying to make decisions to create what you want in your future, <laughs> you see the problem? Yeah. Yeah. That's bad. So the decisions with the thymus would always be to uh, do what you needed to do in order to remain safe. Yeah. So if what you would do is you would take on a, what we call a thymus dragon. And what the thymus dragon would do would create a drag on the thymus from doing what it's supposed to do, which is to be aggressive enough to protect you. So do you see how our niceness programming is basically thousands of years of dragon programming? If it, if it had a, a poster, the dragon would basically say, keep the truth down. You know, you don't have to feel safe. This is an unsafe world. You know, uh, the truth will never be accepted. Um, give it up, you know. Well, you cannot play a game of darkness in the light. It's, it's impossible. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I'm interested in understanding a little bit more about past life traumas and how that affects us here and now and how people can come to learn to understand um, whether they're actually um, sort of, you know, uh, acting in them when they're programming. And this also, I think, carries through sometimes to childhood trauma, which affects us and they, uh, continues to affect okay. us throughout life. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me let me just explain that because there's some simple things that'll help you understand that very clearly. Yes. First of all, two thirds of the brain cells in your brain are association cells. That means the memory is primarily programmed by association. In other words, whatever happens at the same point in time. And so you memorize whatever's around you. You know, you can see this most clearly in allergies. Uh, you can become allergic to orange juice if you grew up in a family that yelled and screamed at breakfast every morning and you had orange juice. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and and just, just elaborate on that example and there's millions of examples of how this works. So, uh, learning to uh, understand who we are energetically uh, from, from our, our history, our memory, and what happens is whatever's going on in our present, in our life, in our present, that associates with on a feeling level, so it's not going to be very obvious many times, but on a feeling level, whatever's happening in our present is going to trigger whatever felt like that back in our memory. Now, we won't necessarily be conscious of that, but when it triggers it, what it does is it pulls that memory forward to take over and make decisions for us here and now, in that moment. And this all happens in a you know thousandth of a second. Yeah. Okay. You see, you see how the picture picture gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you get more real about what's really going on. So getting ahead of that and, and, and letting it affect our decisions for rejuvenation and regeneration of every cell of our body is what the language of the body is all about. So that we can understand what decisions we're making that are feeding the black hole energy and degenerating us. And which ones we're making, you know, spiritually that are regenerating. Well, I think it would probably be helpful here to just take you through what I do with a new client yeah. that doesn't know anything about what we're doing. Uh, the first thing I do is I, I use the infrared to uh, do a measurement of 23 points on the face. And each of these points is what we call a force vector point or a junction point for the flow of electrical energy between all the different organs and glands of the body, which is basically 23 organ gland energy systems. And each of those systems has uh, uh, 
purpose. It's designed to do something. Uh, it has a plan. It has a way of doing it. It had, and it has a function. It, it, it fits into the bigger plan to do something. And that's true not only physically, but emotionally and mentally. And so the design is for them all to work together without drag in between them. What's called the straight and narrow path of energy with the least electrical resistance. Now, if you have trauma memory on those organs, and what a trauma memory on an organ is, is a memory that tells you it's not okay to do what the organ is designed to do. That's a, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dragon specialty. <laughs> <laughs> See? And it's aggre aggression, for example. Aggression is a spiritual emotion. It's, it's holding that poster up, you it's, know, under the, the big banks and big pharma and Monsanto. It, it's, 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 the, it's the opportunity to uh, show up for yourself and, uh, your and, and, and protect yourself. Now, um, so each organ has a, a, a purpose, a plan, a function, an issue, a trauma. Now, what the trauma does is it makes the organ feel like it's not safe. For example, for aggression, let's just take an example here. You grew up in a family where it wasn't safe for you to feel aggressive, be aggressive, to do anything aggressive. Now, granted, you you got to draw the line there, but there's a fine line, and it has to be drawn or else you'll get someone that feels like it's not good to be aggressive and that'll be someone who doesn't take care of themselves and then they will fall into some, you know, it'll be a whole pattern. They can spend their whole life dealing with that pattern. They'll be dragon bait the rest of their lives. Does, it, does, calls them. does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Well, that's the first lesson all humans have to learn right there. Can you see how we've been drummed, that's been drummed out of us to yeah. start with? Don't shine your light. Put that truth down, you know? Yeah. You don't even know what you're talking about. And, you know, all the shills, that's their thing on the Internet is telling everybody that they don't know what they're talking about. Now, can you imagine coming in after learning the language of the body and letting people know that you do know what you're talking about, just like Heather let her lawyers know that she did know what they were talking about. And every one of us can do this personally. If they figure out the well, language of the body, what it does, which, it, by the way, is going to be in his book called The Body Bible, and it's going to be released soon. Wonderful. So I contact you. What, what it does, it, it allows us to get in touch with ourselves, and, and that's all Heather's talking about. Yeah. It's 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 exactly the same thing, and that's uh, in fact I wrote Heather a letter, but uh, I'm sure she got She's millions busy. of letters, so. But anyway, that's what I wanted She's to tell her. the financial system. Wow. Do you, uh, do you know what? what she would love to hear this interview. So I'm, I'm very glad you contacted me and we're going to get this info out. What, what I found absolutely incredibly interesting is, um, you know, through the whole OPPT system, um, or what they've done, um, it really has just brought out some of the most amazing people who resonate with this on a very deep level because as you say it is a, a it's a spiritual schism that we've been experiencing that is now yes. there for us to heal yes. Yes. yeah well and you know we've got all our niceness programming just you know married to the new age group and they do not understand this game i'm, I'm sorry mm. to say that just blatantly but the thymus teaches us to use the appropriate amount of aggression with love and light to get our point across. In other words, to shine the light of the, our energetic truth. But if we can't do that, if we don't know what the energetic truth is. And see, that's that's the reason I finally wrote the book, is to be able to have it accessible to people to understand who they are and how they function. Because without that, we, we don't have a chance. Because it leaves us in confusion about who we are and how the vehicle that we are in operates. Can I, let, let's talk a little bit more about energetic truth because I think it's so relevant at this point. Is okay. truth and energy, is it a vibration we all attune to? Is it something we recognize? It, it's basically the laws of energy. 
or uh, it, regenerate, and, regenerate. And they call it yeah that, that that regenerate. It's it's also called the ways. So the laws and the ways, in my mind, are the same thing. It's the path of the least electrical resistance, and there's room in there in the middle. You know, it's not always one way. It changes from situation to situation. See, see the easy thing about the dark is that it is eliminated in the light. Instantly. See? And, and that's, that's exactly what Heather's doing. And the body is the light. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I mean, the body is 253 circuits that are designed to receive spirit life force energy light packet messages and, and express them and express them now, every organ is a perceptor and an expressor so let me do another organ uh my mother died of kidney disease so when my first uh, session with dean was there and phew, the head of my uh chain of numbers was the um kidney which is fear and i you know i lived in fear all my life and i was used to it and i didn't even know i was at the time that he met me, but <laughs> uncovering the layers was what was interesting for me. But I uh, found out I had all kinds of things to be afraid of, you know. I mean, in 3D, in the higher, there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, you get to a fifth dimensional level and you laugh at all of it. It's just a game. It's just a hologram, you know. But while you're in 3D and you, you still got a body and pinch yourself, find out if you're still here, you know, this is the game to learn so that you can ascend quickly. Well, clarity is a powerful tool. The kidney, the kidney disease was what my mother died of. It was the heaviest electrical drag on my system. So it got my attention when Dean told me, what this is say saying is your body, your kidneys are saying, because I had kidney problems for 20 years, wow. is that you are not filtering toxic emotional situations, which is the emotional component of the organ of the kidney. And this results being, being over-filtering or under-filtering. And in my case, I was born in a religious background, heavy duty, all of that. Uh, I was an internationally famous singer in my church. And, uh, you know, it was just the way it was because you don't even question it. It's just what is taught as the energetic truth when it is, in fact, not the energetic it's truth. It's kind of like banks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but we bought it, and as long as we kept buying it, they kept profiting by it. But anyway, I finally woke up, got out of that system, and when he told me that there was a heavy electrical drag on my kidney, it explained why I couldn't feel anything in my kidney one way or the other. It was just a matter of, you know, never filtering anybody or anything. That's, I was on that side of the pendulum. And it's taken a long time. I went from there to filtering everybody too much, and now I've swung over to the middle, and I can actually feel my kidney when it tells me now, now that the circuits are cleared and I've got the scientific evidence to prove that they are, is that it took me eight months, by the way, is that I can now feel uh, what a fearful situation is and what it is not. So I don't have to be in See, unnecessary fear let, anymore. Let me go over the kidney a little bit here in terms of what it is. That the, the, uh, the emotion is fear and it has to do on a on a practical level uh, with the ability to uh, first of all experience what doesn't work for you emotionally and then to do something about it to basically say this doesn't work for me emotionally so you feel see? it to heal it see <laughs> and, 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 and notice how it's exactly what Heather's saying to do to at the banks it's, it's exactly the same thing in other words tune in to what's happening and then express it. And it's, it's on four lobes of the brain, and they're called see, feel, say, and do. And and that's eighty percent of your brain. That's your cerebral cortex, and it's uh, 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 four pairs of lobes, and two of them are input, which is see and feel, and two of them are output, which is say and do. And that's what the hippies meant when they said get it together is to get together what you see, feel, say, and do. Because if you see one thing, say another thing, feel another thing, and do another thing, you are by definition disintegrated. And if you do that long enough, it'll disintegrate you physically. And that's what is causing deaths worldwide. We were actually made to rejuvenate and regenerate. That's why some of these people are still in bodies. You know, we heard about St. Germain, you know, how long has you know, he been here? So some of these people know how to do this. They know the way. 
and um, apparently they're going to let us, you know, know it too. Okay, well, hold on. This is very interesting. Heather, um, I've been trying to speak to her for ages about Saint Germain and the dragons. Do you know anything about this? Well, I know about dragons, uh, and I I love what I uh, know of Saint Germain. I've got two two dollar bills here on my dresser with his picture on them. Okay, tell me a little bit about that, because this is something that keeps coming up in in this sort of like these circles. Well, we just talked to Sheldon Nidal, and he would, he was had been visited by Saint Germain, and you know Sheldon's working with all of these. You know, I mean, basically they're they're gathering the. Um, the militaries of the entire world, and just asking the leaders, you know, who've before now been working all corporatized everything, governments, you know, countries, you know, everything, um, banks, it's all been corporatized to feed, you know, uh, one l large coffer for 13 families. But basically, um, and it's, it's been mafia driven, you know, big pharma. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's talk about this because uh, one of the big confusions that humans have is uh, their compartmentalizations. And there's only one that really works, and it's those two energies again. So rather than think of uh, them and us and the rich and the poor and the Democrats and the Republicans and the, the you know, yes, uh, all, of, all of those dichotomies, because none of them, go to the bottom line. The only one that goes to the bottom line is the two energies. And so if we can think of the ways of the dragon and the ways of the spirit, and I started to tell you those seven words and we never yeah. got to it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, there's, there's five words for the dragon that define the ways of the dragon. And there's two words for the spirit. The five words of the dragon are in a sequence. And the sequence is first word is confusion because the dragon they they need to have people confused in order to manipulate them which is the second word or no in order to deceive them which is the second word once they're deceived then they can be manipulated which is the third word and then you enhance that with fear and force so the five words are confusion deception manipulation fear and force so whenever you see those, feel those, experience those, those are the ways of the dragon. The ways of the spirit are two words, love and light. Now love, the operative word is accept. And because if you don't feel accepted, you don't feel loved. And uh, light is truth or the laws of energy and everything is energy. So it's the ways of energy. Okay. So, so since you are defined as 253 circuits, you are a you know spirit being having a human experience in a light body. And people say, no, my light body is going to be when I die. And I'm saying, no, it's who you are right now. It's 253 circuits that can receive light if they're open. Well, who's in charge is always the question. Is the dragon in charge or is the spirit in charge? That's, that's, and it can now be measured. That, that's the only question there is. And if the spirit's in charge, you will see the ways of the spirit. If the dragon's in charge, you'll see the ways of the dragon. And it will basically show up as sickness and disease. And, and you know by observing. Because the physical is the last dumping ground of energy. It comes after, you know, understanding our emotions, which is the dragon in the lake. And it comes after, you know, ignoring uh, the mental construct of the way spirit gave it to you. And the observation... Uh, is not judgment. Observation of reality as it exists in terms of the energetic laws is not judgment. Judgment is when you're wrong. Observation is when it's the way it is. So it's discernment and discri discrimination, uh, observation of according to the spiritual natural laws of energy based on what we call the skeleton of all knowledge which is the divine language of the body and how energy works in everyone's organs and glands because what we are spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically is 252 circuits of light is we are spirit and, the, and of course the other energy is what we call, it's the hologram, it's the, how the game was created somehow, is what Dean calls the not you. Isn't that cute? It's, it's the drag or the programming. 
is what it is. And the dragon is the programming. It's the memory programming of fear and defense. And there's two basic uh, operations, which is offense and defense, like in any other game. But notice that there's no points for defense. It isn't about getting points in defense or the game of the dragon. It's about making sure the other guy doesn't get points. Isn't isn't that what it's about? Yeah, don't shine your truth. You're nothing. You know, you know you're yeah. a piece of crap. Yeah. We 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 get it all, and you get nothing. See, that's the that's the attitude of the dragon, and and it's it's the best it can do. It's a survival mechanism. But have you noticed the new kids coming to the planet just know not to do that? They just know to shine their light, and they're just standing out in the street, and, and they're <laughs> bringing down, and they don't give a crud. They're just gonna do it. See, they, and a little child shall lead us, you know, and lead them. I mean, here we are. I mean, we are being led by some very strong spirits who are out there leading us on the front lines. And some of them, you know, have faced some grave dangers in doing it. But they, they knew that their tongue was going to be their greatest weapon of all. And, and, and that the light, the energetic light of truth, what we all feel and just know, they were going to speak it. So I, I'd be interested in uh, in your response to what we've talked about so far. And also, I was going to ask you this yesterday. Uh, what is your background? How did you get here? Yeah, because wow. you did. You know, what you have just said there, Kirsty, I've got a little tear in my eye because that is me. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I know. I am one of these people who come and I'm just like, I'm not going to be part of that. And I'm one of these, I, I, you know, stand up, speak my truth and shine my light in dark places sort of people. Um, and yes, we have had um, unfortunate things happen to us because of it. We've, we've been faced danger and, you know, um, I think we're probably one of the older, we've been around for quite a bit of time in terms of, I think four years now we've been going with Freedom Central compared to say say Lisa Harrison and Santos and all of them they've come along sort of a couple of years back but in the beginning when alternative media started to break with the likes of Project Camelot David Icke started picking up in popularity um, there was still a lot of uh, danger involved with speaking out and we were targeted massively so you know um, we've, we've been there and it's yeah we've, we've come down a long path but my my life and background is um, it's also one amazingly interested and convoluted story. I mean, I, it's all, like yourself, Kirsty, I've come from a performance background. I studied performing arts. I uh, grew up in South Africa, spent 23 years there, and moved to London, got into media after years of bouncing between marketing jobs, got into media, and then became so disillusioned with everything and really started to, I don't know, went through a bit of a spiritual transformation and started to realize that whole fame and all that, it's sort of the external locus of one's identity. It's not really a real thing. And my whole world started to crumble around me and within the media paradigm. And I, my husband, I had a bit of a breakdown. My husband and I decided, let's move to Holland. And we did. And I started going to yoga every day. And I'm not, I, I stopped working because I wasn't able to speak Dutch properly at that time. And really, it was during that time that I kind of started waking up and started doing a bit of research and started writing a book, which I'd always wanted to do. And um, it, it, that talk, took me on to uncovering a whole bunch of stuff. And there's a whole bunch of very interesting spiritual things that have happened. Lots of dragon type um, <laughs> encounters in um, interesting ayahuasca sessions that I've done and oh, things okay. like that. So, <laughs> you know, all very, all, all very symbolic. So, yeah. well, you're, you know, they, uh, there were brain studies done at Princeton, and uh, at one point, the flask goes under the light, and it's predictable. All of the, the little uh, uh, things in the flask could just suddenly turn their lights on. At first, though, it's one, and then another one, and then another one. The and see, cells. Mel, you're one of those first ones, and it's, it's wonderful. You know, I kind of had to keep Dean... Uh, focused on this book and we've kept ourselves very very uh we, we've watched the the world to get to the place that it is right now <laughs> so that we can feel safe enough to come and bring this out to the world wow. do you understand that see i i love your, your information do you know what it resonates on such a deep level w- what you're giving to me i i understand it fills in gaps of my understanding because yes. i understand yeah. the basics yes. and what you're telling me means so much it really does i actually have some really you know you, you want to know my response i actually have some questions i've been scribbling notes while i've been working um, sure. talking sure. here sure. um you say obviously um 
you know, when it's not the truth, uh, we're seeing one thing, we're understanding a different thing, we, we're physically working in a different way, our, our system's not working together, that rots us from the inside because actually we're living lies. And truth is the thing that binds us together because that energy kind of works. Right. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. You got on. it. You that's got right. it. The lies are killing us, literally. Yeah. Right. But we oh, don't know incredible. what see, and that's the unconscious part. And so we just, you and know, then, we're, we're doing our, you know, rice and, milk and everything and, and, and eating our salads and we're still not getting better, you know. Mm. And that's why consciousness is the only elegant solution because it's the only thing that gives you a conscious choice of reality. That's beautiful, Dean. Yeah, yeah. Now tell me something. People who suffer from diabetes, I've always been um, convinced that's some kind of emotional disease. It, every disease is okay. an emotional uh, disease. Uh, di diabetes primarily has to do with the pancreas. Mm. And the pancreas, on the emotional level, has to do with, first of all, being able to experience your true feelings and follow them. And the emotion is laughter and joy, which is the feeling that you have when you're following your true feelings. Yeah. Now, the dragon is when it's not okay for you to follow your, or maybe even notice your true feelings. And numb yourself out, you know. Mm. See the problem? But uh. once you speak your truth, then that really heals the pancreas. Mm. It's Specific of, course, of course, you may have no more friends yeah. or relatives. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm just like you. I went into TV. I did all of the outward thing. I did a uh, career, 17 years of singing, uh, or I mean 17 CDs of original music. And now I've changed all that to spiritual music. You know, it hasn't happened yet that I've gotten the music Transformational. Out yet, I'm like the butterfly. <laughs> I'm going to be reborn here. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> it's so right. lovely to hear. Yeah. old... The old church, the outer church for the inner church. And I know that's your story too, Mel. That's why I resonated to you and why I wanted to write you. Oh, it yeah, me too. Yeah, so much so. Uh, you know, uh, absolutely. That's exactly my story as well. Um, and, and what amazes me is, um, you know, when I, I first started speaking to Heather, and it really is a true honor to to have had this time and speak with her because what an incredibly in spiritually in touch woman. She blew me away. But what was, in, what was even more incredible was in speaking to her, it was like I, I knew her. For, I had you known know, her for did, so long. This, uh, this, uh, just like this. I mean, we, we've all see, got these spiritual see, appointments with all, each other. All, yes. all spirits know each other. They, and there's no conflict between each other. I, I taught the psychology of consciousness at Boise State for three years. And it was back in the 70s when there were almost riots from different factions of uh, so-called gurus, you know. And... Uh, the, the one thing that I did to try and pull this all together is create a meditation. And the meditation was all of the different masters of all time coming together for a dinner party. And then once I got this meditation in uh, their minds, then I asked them, what would they be arguing about? And the answer is nothing. That's what makes them masters. Heather, Heather chose you on purpose, Mel. You know that. Yeah. So, so all spirits, all they, they know and love all other spirits. Now, the problem is who's in charge, remember? Whether it's the spirit or the electrical drag. From memory that's reactively leading your life. So the key is to get clear and quick enough ahead of the game before you make decisions to know how the game works. And every organ and gland has a story, and it teaches you about your traumas, and it teaches you how to get past your traumas. And it's called the Body Bible. It's his new book coming out. I've got to throw that plug in because this book is going to literally change the entire world. It's going to change how everybody sees energetic reality because well, it's you the body. Well, it'll give a clear perception language. of yourself. And, and there's nothing more important than to be a, have a clear perception of who you are and how you function. Know thyself. Yes. You do no harm. And, and, you know, Big Pharma will be, if they're interested in really what's going to help us, then they'll welcome this with open arms. Well, it yes. isn't Big Pharma. It's okay. dragons. And dragons are not interested. And be clear on that. Yeah, they never were because it messes with their bottom line. Well, they have no use for the light because they're specialists in games of darkness. So why would they be interested in the light? But they'll pretend that they are. Well, and they're good at pretending they, they, they love to hide behind the light. They love to act like they're in the light. 
and then twist it a little bit so it goes in their pocket. So the people are feeling some truth coming at them, but you know they're not aware of the twist. So this is going to straighten out the yeah, that's twist. That's what the banks did, right? It's the clean spot in language, the way we all communicate with each other. And our 23 organs and glands are 100% of who we are, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Now, up to this point, the New Age language, and you know, all of it going back is all about, you know, getting out of your mind, getting out of your, you know, forget what you think you know. And I could see the masters presenting that as a message to countless generations because what they thought they knew was not energetically correct because they didn't know this language and there wasn't enough science, I guess, back then. Or maybe they did teach it in all its glory. I don't know, but it's been pretty much erased. But it's very simple. Whatever the body does physically, it also has a mirror image function, emotionally and mentally. Wow. And once you understand that language, I'm telling you, the lights just went on on the planet. Because that is who we are and how we function on all levels. And let me ask you something. Um, the need for human beings to deliberately poison their bodies, be it through food or pharmaceuticals, this has to do with our inability to read our emotional bodies. Well, yes. and, uh, uh, but see, what you describe right there is exactly what the dragon does. See, the dragon has its own interest, and its interest is toxins. See? Okay. That's what we call dragon food. Because its job is in the universe is to swallow up suns. But, well, and, and to create drag in the body, and that's what does it, is toxins. And if the sun finds itself in a magnetic pull and it doesn't get itself out of there, it's down in the black hole and gets pulled down to its lowest denominator, yeah. which, you know, is the way it all works. You have to decide, is my life over now, you know, and keep doing what you've been doing or learning how to get out of it? Because... Whatever is happening as far as degeneration will continue into degeneration faster now that the vibration is moving upwards. To me, one of the most destructive energies is boredom. What sort of organs does that affect and how does it affect our body? Uh, that's the skin and that's your identity. And you're bored when you're not doing your thing and you're doing someone else's thing. Wow. That's and it's all about borders and boundaries, which is what the skin does. And you got to know where your borders are. And somebody, you know, like a mother that's uh, the over, you know, coddling mother the, that the, doesn't know where she ends and her child begins. The, the skin issue is the ability to define, defend, and express your true self. And if you not grow, do not grow up in an environment where you're made to feel safe, defining, defending, and expressing your true self, then you will take on a skin dragon, which is what we call codependence. So you will you will try and be what you think you're supposed to be. Make other people happy. <laughs> See? Wow. And that's boring. <laughs> yeah, because you're not doing what we call your divine intent. And your divine intent makes you, your heart sing when you get And, and do you morning. see how boring is a message? Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's like you're, you're not doing your thing, you're doing someone else's. I suffered from boredom so for such a long period of my life doing things, like jobs that I just didn't have, couldn't find the will to have interest in. Thought there was something you're, wrong you're with me. You're not bored anymore, are you? <laughs> no, geez, you know what? My life's great now. This, what, what I do now fills me so much. I, I couldn't think of doing a job for money. Yeah, well, you've been there. You've had the money. And you knew there was something more besides that. And that's what makes you such a true angel on this earth now. Yes. Oh, do you know, I love it. It's, uh, I get to meet wonderful people like you. And the privilege of being able to do this and learn, you know, I, I, I encourage anybody to sort of uh, pick up a microphone, get a little blog going, do, do your own education and your own research. You know, and there's nothing special about me or anybody else or Lisa who does exactly. this. I think the more exactly. of this information out there, the more people are having conversations like this, the better. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Dean's yeah. done a lot of shows. Yeah, this is what I call God's plan, is communication. But you know what a big problem that is. And <laughs> it's designed, it's, it's defined by its results. So, in other words, if you say something, but it doesn't communicate, there will be no, no results. So, yes. that's not communication. And the body is constantly giving us communication messages and these little organ light packages. The question is, are we, you know, getting the messages? 
you know, Dean, there, we have talked about the levels of pressure that happens when spirit life, where's the, the eternal heart, uh, the source talks to us through our, our light yes. uh, circuits. Well, there's, there's, uh, there's six. Yeah, this is, this is really probably worth it. And it's easy to picture. There's six words. I think there are that, uh, are, uh, in a sequence and, uh, Let's see if from, I can from the words of pressure. Uh, yeah, they're all they're all about pressure, and uh, the first word, which is how we're designed to function, is impression. It's that heart prompting, that yeah. feeling, that oh, it's, it, it, it's, it's tuning into the organs, and, and and you're getting feelings from them. You know, impressions. Now, we're designed to function that way, but if we if we don't, then. Uh, the the system ups the the pressure. the pressure on them, and we go to the next pressure word, which is compression, and we can function reasonably well at that level. And it, but it's a higher level of pressure, and therefore it takes you out of the moment of power, and so it doesn't work quite as well. Now beyond that, there seems to be a specific decision that's made in reference to pressure, and it's various levels of uh, compressing it. And the next one is compression or compression. And so that's, uh, that's actually suppressing the feelings rather than responding to them. You see the difference? Yes. And then it goes from compression to suppression to repression to... Um, to super pressure, which is... Right. Well, yeah. It's, uh, compression, suppression, repression. Depression. And repression is usually where alcohol comes in. Mm. <laughs> and then it goes to what is Graham called... Graham Hancock uh, called uh, that the boring, most boring of all drugs. Yeah. Alcohol. <laughs> uh, the last one is oppression, which is... Well, you uh, miss depression. Deep mm -hmm. pressure. Is deep depression. Deep. Yeah, it's compression, repression, depression, oppression. Yes. And the answer to all of that is expression. Yeah. The only other word in the English language from the root word of pressure. Wow. So the Spirit teaches us to speak our truth clearly, quickly, and appropriately according to whatever situation is, is there. And the Masters just knew how to do that. And uh, their organs and glands taught them. And they're teaching us too. So once this language gets out, that's why we just called it the Body Bible. Not to, it's not religion at all. It's it's the divine uh, matrix of the way energy works in the body as a human being of two hundred fifty-three well, circuits. Yeah, through the organs and glands. Wow. Incredible. I look very much forward to reading this. And you know what? I think this is definitely going to fill in the gap for those people looking to bridge the spiritual with the actual 3D reality through our body. Oh, 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 yes, yeah. that's what we're yeah, hoping for. Because there's so, come in, so much oppression and depression and suppression and oppression well, around the, the, the churches today. They're all at each other's throats and there's no need. Otherwise, the confusion consumes everything. And if you see them as corporations that have actually been, you know, pitted one against another, the house divided against itself will fall. You know, we, that's so simple to understand that. But this gets it all together under one umbrella, which is the spiritual and natural and, laws of nature. And, and what I've noticed is every single organization that you can imagine, probably even the banks, there's those that are uh, following the ways of the spirit, and those that are following the ways of the dragon. The outer organizations or corporations and the inner organization. And once people mm -hmm. start thinking, are they of the ways of the dragon or the ways of the spirit rather than Democrat or Republican, they're going to be a lot clearer on the solution. Or Catholic or Jew. It's <laughs> just, you know, and the, the, can you see how the dragon has countered on everybody's confusion and deception and manipulation of these things? Yeah. Yeah, through politics, through religious systems, all sorts of control, media. Oh, yeah. oh everything. Well, see, this is the absolute. It's what Heather calls the absolute reality. Yeah, you know, how right. it's going to, I don't think she knows. You know, she's not acknowledging yeah. that she's well, above anybody else. I loved listening to your, you know, she just gives so, everybody so much respect. But just because the dragon is learning and trying to change and we can forgive it and love it, doesn't necessarily mean we have it for Sunday dinner. The Thymus teaches us that. And that's why there could be more and more light groups formed. 
and so, there will be rules, you know? It's, it's what we call disciplining the dragon, which strengthens its spirit because the dragon goes more to sleep and the spirit awakens upon hearing the truth. She, uh, she talks about prime, and I, I love that because that's what this system is. It's the prime for every organ and gland, and that's what I call the spirit function. Now, she calls it the eternal heart, I think. Yes. Yeah. I think, time I, time I, I think they're basically, the, you know, words never are adequate yeah. for what we're talking about. The ineffable herself. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, got, we got some good ones going on, but it's who we are as spirit life force beings uh, acting in a play called Life with a, an instrument of 253 circuits. And, you know, I love, I, I read this on the internet the other day, and it said, uh, take care of your body. If you don't, where will you live? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I've got another one. Uh, it says, um, this is Martin Luther King. He says, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. You know, it's the, it's the speaking out. That's what every organ is designed to express. To Show discern up. and to, to express its truth. And this is Carl Jung who said, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light. You know, there's a lot of people that are saying, oh, that's not positive. That's not my vibration. I need to get that away from me. You know, but that's not what we mean. It's a bigger <laughs> picture than that. Um, so one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. Do you see the difference? It's, 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 the, it's, it's more right. of an absolute energetic truth. Right. And as you shine light on it, you take the power away, see? And you claim your power back. That's and it's the same win, thing win. that's going on with banks. Nobody loses instead of the lose lose, which is what the dragon wants to do, or the you know, you lose it wins. It's a, a spirit win win in both people. If you shine the light on somebody who's just on the cusp and will still listen to you, but their dragon is in charge, and you shine enough light on it, I mean, you know what that's like for the person to change their mind, make a different decision that you know in your heart is more regenerative and they knew in their heart was more regenerative, but they just needed you to kind of help them push them over the edge. Well, all light workers are called now with this language as the ultimate backbone of understanding the spiritual natural laws of energy for us as human beings, spirits in a human body. And as the more we understand this language, the more we're able to be ourselves, the more we're able to be and do and to just tune in to the energetic reality, what we know as spirit. Wow. wow. <laughs> that blew me away. Sure, okay, so now let's talk about like our past lives and things and how uh, they do, I mean, we must have some sort of memories. And I, I give, okay, let me give you a bit of background. You want to know sort of a bit of background here. I am descended from the Boers who are descended from the French Huguenots who were chased out of France by the Catholics, heavily persecuted. And at the moment, there's a, a genocide going on against the Boers in South Africa. Um, and... I feel very much having come to some certain levels of spiritual awareness um, that our past life and ancestral memories are precipitate our very being and, and almost everything we do because I feel like I've been brought down this path where I've met all these people, gathered all this information and it's brought me to this precipice where I'm now about to tell the most important story I've ever told which is, which is the untold story of white genocide in South Africa because everyone is so mm. like, you know, and I, I'm, I'm now like... That's for you. Yeah, so this is how I feel when you said to, to you know, your past life and, and folks' various okay. emotional bodies. I'm keen to learn about that. Right. Well, it's all memory. That's what that's what genetics is, basically. Cellular memory. It, it's, it's memory in the, in the genes. And it's primarily, in my view at least, uh, uh, emotional memory. And each organ has a different emotion, so it's all the combination of all of these negative dragon feelings associated with each of the organs and glands. And it's all fear-based, and it's all based on survival. If we don't get ahead of it, we keep repeating these same things from lifetime to lifetime. So how do we do that? Is it coming to understand how it all works? No, you do it in the moment. And see, that's what all of the training and the practice and the, and the work that I do with clients, it's all about them being able to perform in the moment. Okay. 
this I love this because I, I'm you know I'm a big fan of the work that Eckhart Tolle has put out and he has very much introduced me to um, not living in my head and being in the moment and my life has never been so rich <laughs> of course Sweet. and there's a lot of truth to that but it can also be misunderstood and there's there's actually a bigger picture well confusion is the primary human problem it's the bottom of everything and so, and what confusion is, is when your concepts, con, don't fuse with energetic reality as it exists. Like what I hear a lot of is, oh, I, I'm, I know nothing, I'm so spiritual, I know nothing, I know nothing. And, you know, we were designed to know what we are, who we are, and how we function as, as our birthright to know. And yet this is still, still not taught in the schools. It's still not taught in the churches, which well, is where it belongs and, and, as well. It's not really something you teach. It's something you feel. Well, see? it has to be. And, 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 and if you don't, we're back to safe and worthy of love, see? If you don't feel safe and worthy of love, <laughs> you're not going to learn anything. Mm. It's, it's your gut hunches. It's what you know deep inside. It's, it's that thing that you knew if you listened to the first time, you wouldn't be where you are now. <laughs> but you see how it's emotional rather than mental? And how, that's why Dean calls the emotions our spiritual guidance system. If we understand them, we know how to use them. Well, what, what is your issue in terms of dealing with that now? I mean, you say you want to understand it, but what, anything more? Well, no, I, I just find it very fascinating because, I, to be honest with you, I was only the only one. I... I've been coming to understand spiritual concepts not because I've been listening to people like yourselves but because I've kind of been working them out and I kind of had sure. worked this out for myself because I'm now uh, understanding various spiritual elements uh, beyond I think what most people are allowed to know within this paradigm but and I just and I just thought to myself there's so many things to come into my life in the past and I look back and at the time I didn't know what the hell was happening but when looking back now I was like oh okay I understand exactly why that happened now I realize that my life nothing has been accidental everything has been very purposeful and now I'm on such a strong current of purpose driven intent that I, I, I have such clarity as to what it is all about yeah. yes yeah. you you yeah. really are just well, see, if we if we did a, a, a scan on you, it would show which organs are holding the most drain. Yeah. And, th and then we would look and see what those issues are and how they applied to your life, and that's how you would connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And the more you had them connected, you'd see ahead where and when and how and who triggers what. And, and then uh, the, the assignment that, is, that I give every, scion, uh, every client is what I call scripting. And that is exactly the same process they use to make movies. <laughs> which is they look at each day, the end of the shooting, they look and see what are the bad scenes and the great scenes. And only great scenes qualify and all bad scenes are eliminated. And then if they have to redo them, they call the actor in and they tell him exactly what was wrong with the scene, they tell him how to redo it, and they're expected to redo it the next day. Only Dean's helping you with your life. <laughs> <laughs> See, so, so every life is a movie. Yeah. Literally. See? And if you treat it the same way, you, you'll get ahead of it because you'll see your bad scenes based on understanding yourself and how you function. And then you'll see the old script that you automatically go into with no thought whatsoever, but it's totally dysfunctional. And then you will re-script it in a way, and, and in, in acting, this is what they call typecasting. If, if you're trying to move out of your character, you know. Yeah. Because typecasting movie is easy, you know. But moving into a di completely different character is difficult. Well, and if the completely different character is what you need to do, you still need to do it. You see the problem? Yeah. I, I, I do see the problem. Oh, that's not me. Say that again. I, I do see the problem. And I, I think, uh, to me, uh, predominantly humanity uh, generally struggles to accept the basic flaws within the way they function they tend to blame and i believe in blaming they're actually giving up the opportunity to grow because as you're saying taking the oh, time to reflect right. but they they do this primarily because of confusion yeah 
exactly. Yeah, okay. Very, very interesting indeed. Now, I would love for you guys to tie this a little bit more into the OPPT. Um, obviously, you, this is something that obviously resonated with you very strongly when you first um, heard the interview. Um, sure. Your teachings and what you do, take people through, take, bridge that gap for us. Well, just at the time when clean energy is coming online, we've got clean money. You know, I, I heard you guys talk about, <laughs> and it was one of those things I kind of knew, but I don't know how I knew it. But mm. you guys talked about the DNA on gold and how it knows who it belongs to. And, you know, I mean, that's clean money. A long time ago, uh, we were offered $5 million here, $3 million here to put uh, a healing center together. But we looked at the money and it wasn't clean. So we couldn't do it. Um, then there's the clean understanding of the template of the language of the body which helps us remember, you know, who we are as organ members of the body. And spirit is the director, and we're the orchestra. And it's the clean spot for all of us to uh, learn, uh, do, and be, you know. And because nobody's really got this perfectly or we wouldn't be here, you know. Well, in terms of OPPT, I, uh, I, I thought a lot about this, and I... I that's why I wrote Heather a letter. I'd love to talk to her because we're, we're definitely headed in the same direction. Uh, we come from two completely different backgrounds. Uh, but, you know, this is what I've focused the last 40 years on is trying to get people conscious enough that they can live their own lives in a way that works. And that's exactly what she's doing in terms of this whole banking thing. So, and many things else in there. So CVACs are going to take care of the treasury and the education and the health. And as we, you know, are basically, you know, sucking from that source uh, to assist humanity to come online again spiritually, um, I, I see that there will be more and more spirit communities coming together and trying to do what works versus what doesn't work. And if we can have the language of the body as the... Uh, skeleton of understanding of how things work energetically which is what it's designed to be designed to be it will you know lead us out of the desert and into the promised land so to speak well it clears a lot of confusion you know a huge chunk of confusion because once people see clearly who they are and how they function and you start putting all the pieces together all of a sudden the puzzle it's like putting a puzzle together and the more pieces you put in the clearer the picture right it's work they work energetically. They feel good. You're in joy versus, you know, all the levels of pressure. So interesting you said that because this is what OPPT has been to me. It's been a big piece of the puzzle, which, you know, in, in my, uh, and I consider myself to be a puzzle piece collector, you know, and it, fit, it, it fitted so well into everything that I was collecting that I was like, you know, uh, there's a lot of people who are very scared thinking this is a, a new world order type system to get us all to give up cash and be enslaved because obviously there's that huge uh, no driven. wonder, no wonder, yeah. you know, the way that we've been programmed. Well, I can see why the dragon would want us to think that too. Yeah. Because it wants to survive. That's its ultimate motivational goal is to survive. It wants to continue doing what it's doing even if it's killing itself to do that. And it can't see beyond that because it's not its nature. It would, be, see how the light it, has it, to shine it would be a disadvantage for the survival principle, which is nothing else matters, which is exactly how they act. <laughs> yeah, as long as I win. And yet, shining the light of this is a huge spirit win-win for everybody because your spirit, is through the expression of your truth, is being strengthened. And the, the, the spirit in the person being oppressed by the dragon is being strengthened strengthened by the light of your truth. So it's a true spirit win-win when you learn this language and speak it. So tell me what is the actual uh, thing that's going on when, for example, um, I, you know, if someone listens to my interview and they learn something from it, what is happening in, in the body? In their body? Yes. Well, uh, learning is what we call ahas, and that's when connections are made. New neural pathways are being laid and made in their, their mental... They're, they're, they're able to conceive things more clearly, hopefully, if, if you're doing a good job, you know, because every, everybody is frustrated by confusion. Hmm. 
And as, a, as soon as, and you can watch somebody who's confused, and then you show them away, and they go, oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's why Dean's in my place is called the AHA Country Spa. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Wow. Well, that's this. Is what I'm interested in finding out is that every time we, for example, someone watches an interview, they learn a bit more, they have an aha moment. Does that contribute to the overall um, oh, yeah. light? Yes. It fills Absolutely. in the electrical current on the neural pathways in the big brain that we all share. That's like that thin layer around the earth, and that it's literally visibly becoming more light because it's literally got more neural connect, uh, connections on the mental pathway that we all share as, you know, the human brain. And see, as we become more conscious, that becomes more conscious to everyone else, like the hundredth monkey. See? It's like the hardware, and then we've got the mind, which is the software, which is how spirit connects to the actual brain. So, so it, each organ gland has a receptor, an ability to receive those spirit light packet energies, and then to express them. And it's so beautiful to speak this language to each other because then we there is there's just so little room for you know energetic Confusion. error through this perfect divine language that you know the ineffable herself came up with. Now tell me, where do you see us going from here? I mean, there's there's a lot of people not too sure. There's a lot of fear being put out, of course. What is your perception of the future going forward? Well, I, I think we're in, a, in, a, in a, 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 what seems like a gradual transition. From some perspectives, it would be a lightning fast transition because we're on a 26,000-year uh, a cycle here. So, of course, it's slow from <laughs> the here and now point of view. But it's probably about as fast as humans can integrate it and process it and then probably a lot faster than a lot can. Yeah. A lot are working on the neural pathways and getting the mental construct of energetic reality put together among themselves. And some people, some people are still just coming out of the uh, being numb to their emotions space. So we're all going to, you know, as more the higher vibration moves quicker and quicker and quicker and people start to get it faster and faster and faster, which you can see happening now like lightning. It's, it's wonderful to watch. The people that are just barely getting numb, they're going to hurt really bad because, I mean, it's physical pain. Mel, and you're seeing it all around you and some of them are going to opt to just not be here anymore because it's just too painful for them to stay and some of them are going to just quickly do more spiritual work than in a, such a short period of time than they've done in any other lifetime uh, we need to remember that symptoms and problems are the result of specific decisions that have been made usually those specific decisions are made unconsciously and unaware in the mind of the person or the consciousness of the person and consequently that's what therapy is is it's trying to figure all this out you know but if you're operating in a reactive unconscious memory continuously uh, good luck and of course that's that's why they sell everybody on drugs you know because that just numbs everything out makes it worse of course but long term but short term it works and basically the rule of thumb is that Dragon solutions are uh, short-term solutions with long-term problems. But spirit solutions are, sometimes you'll have a short-term problem, which is like learning a new language. Uh, or, you know, telling your boss that, you know, you really don't like feeling, feel, feel like getting groped anymore, you know. But whatever the short-term problem, but in the long term, it's what will work out. And we're going through a tough time right now because we're basically, spirits everywhere are telling giving dragon notice and disciplining it with the light, which is what we do discipline the dragon with. And it is every spirit's job to discipline their dragons with the light. First you do it within yourself, and then you go out and do it in the world. You know, learn, then teach. And share. It's not teaching. You can't teach anybody anything, but you can share and give their spirit an opportunity to hear it. And then at that point, it's everybody's free agency, and there's a lot of agency going on on a more conscious level than we've ever had before. I, it's the most exciting time to wow. be on this planet now. I'm so happy to be here right now. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. That is amazing, Kirsty. Gee, very positive and inspiring indeed. And I think that's what we need right now is we need to be hearing more of this because I think people need to come into their truth um, and feel that there, there is something to look forward to and there is something to work towards. There's a lot of people sitting they, there very despondent. Right. They need to feel safe and worthy of love coming <laughs> into their truth. 
Yes, and I is. love the message, you know, I hate to break it to you, but everything's going to turn out all right. You know, when it looks like it's the worst, things are actually getting better. And sometimes they look too good, you know, complacent, they're actually getting worse. So we all look at our own individual lives and see where we're going. But one thing I see on a big level is what happens generally, because as above, so below, and so below, as above. And when you look at the science of cymatics, you can see that as the overall vibration goes higher, what happens is it becomes a uh, a DNA shift, quantum jump, leap, whatever you want to call it. Some people are calling it the twinkling of an eye. Some people who are there, they're experiencing heaven on earth. They're in their fifth dimensional uh, body. They're experiencing a different way of seeing than they ever did before. It's it, it's beautiful. It feels good. It's, it's that straight and narrow path of energy. And they've achieved heaven on earth. There's many people that have done this. And they're showing others how to do this by their example. <laughs> I love that. And the science of cymatics shows us how we're going to just raise the vibration higher and higher and higher using the, the, the spirit life force energy, whatever it tells us to do and be in the moment. And as more of and more of, and more of us are connected, we're going to just literally uh, quantum shift, jump, we're doing it now into a new level of being and everything else just falls away it's what the ancient 5,000 year old uh, uh, stories about the, the dragon and the spirit because they use the same technology or terminology um, it, it basically the dragon goes to sleep and it only comes back around when we need it for an emergency which is what it was designed to do in the first place so we're basically coming all around into the circle into the here and now and we will only need our dragons from within or without, you know, if there were some planetary cataclysm or something, wow. I guess. But basically, the dragons go to sleep and spirit comes alive. And and the dragons won't go to sleep until the spirit comes alive because they don't feel safe. See? Yeah. Wow. So you can't, you can't shine light unless you know what the light is. And then you can do it with uh, strength and believability knowing that it is a self-evident and undeniable truth within you. And that is spirit speaking to you on 253 circuits, which identifies you as the light and nothing less, which is what I love about the message of, of OPT, OPPT and other. Yes, indeed. And, and that's, that's for me why, you know, as a, a very skeptical journalist, always watching out to see who's trying to trick us. The thing about OPPT and many people are trying to rag it and bring it down. For me, it is the one thing that just grabbed me on a level beyond um, recognizing it through logic. It was, as they said, oh, read, yeah. it with you, read it with your oh, heart. It's right on track. It's right there. It's right on well, track. Well, we knew because she's, they're all working with Sheldon. He's our friend. And we felt like when we got in touch with him a couple months well, ago, that was our first contact. Well. <laughs> He's I, not from here either, Steve. I, I, I knew when she started talking about UCC codes because basically in my simple mind, what it is is UCC codes identify the ways commerce work. And the legal system is primarily focused on the way things don't work. And it's all a negative game. And that's what the dragon always does is focus on the negative. But guess what? It never accomplishes anything. Wow. So, so Sheldon, who is he? He's your connection to Heather. He's how, how you've come to... Sheldon, Sheldon Nidal has uh, been around a long time. I started... Uh, I was friends with him on the Internet back in 1997. Um, before he did his first PAG, and then I became one of the first PAG members. But basically, he's got an actual ability to link directly. He's not a channeler. He's different. He's the only person that's got a direct link um, in his body on this particular level. And he's, he's been working with St. Germain. And, you know, Heather can tell you about his role in it. I think she did mention it in one of your interviews with him. No, she hasn't. I've been hearing the St. Germain dropped in in bits and pieces of conversation. I'm trying to get the story. Heather keeps promising to tell well, me. You'll, you'll hear Sheldon. Well, basically, uh, St. Germain has set up the new monetary system that he knew would come into place. See, because when the light gets strong enough, it's ready for uh, clean money, the, the new light system of money. Uh, based on integrity versus, you know... Well, value, that's Basel three. True value. And that's what's coming through with Basel three, which everything, all the countries are going to realign themselves to what their true value is. And so there will be a lot of revaluing of currencies, 
and that's coming along uh, at the same time. Well, and that's basically what, what St. Germain is, is doing. So that's, as you can see, that's got to be the first thing that comes online. Uh, well, it's all coming online. Well, see, they, they have to shift from the old system to the new system instantaneously. Because yeah. in, in the money world, time is money, you know, so you can't drag it out. And this is what's going on right now is when is that moment? And, and like Heather says, it's funny to watch because, I mean, the joy of it is that they don't have any other choice. Everything's going down. Their systems were only meant to last, you know, the monetary system the way it is with, for 100 years. And we're past that point. So they have to, and I say us and them, I'm talking about we on this planet, okay? Because it's, it's basically the energies within every one of us. We all have our dragons and we all have, you know, the spirit. So that's it's what the one is made out of in 3D. Which but, one's in control? Yeah, you know, which one is in control? Which which wolf you feed the most, you know? Mm. So, but we're getting to a point. The dragon has never wanted us to understand what its physical property, properties are. You know, it really, really doesn't like this at well, all. Well, it's the master of darkness, so no wonder. Yeah. So we can count on that and expect it. And once you understand the way this energy, you know, runs, not to spend too much time on it, because it's a very simple language to understand, you know, what uh, the five words that describe the dragon are. Um, we shine our light by knowing that we're not saviors. We don't, we don't need to come and try to save somebody. That's a huge thing going on right now. And it's, it's, it's a waste of energy for dragons. Now, if their spirit is on the cusp and really trying to get it, but, you know, they're the ones you, you spend your time on. Um, you know, otherwise it's called a waste of time. Yeah. And, and dragons are not interested in changing. Their, their, their swear word in their language is change. They hate change. Well, and here's the, here's the irony. If you engage with dragons... You become the primary reinforcer, enabler, and maintainer of what you don't want. <laughs> so do you see why there'll be a lot of light gathering groups that will recognize each other from past lives, will come together and start to live together, you know, using their free energy and their own, you know, commerce. And, you know, I just there's going to be hundreds, thousands of them start to spring up everywhere. And we are going to have some help, according to Sheldon. We're, we're not alone in this anymore. The hierarchy has decided to lower itself and to assist us as we're waking up, which is what it always does to whatever prison planet they're attending to at the time. And we're just about ready to come out of our quarantine at this point. And it begins with clean money and clean understanding, which is what the you know, language of the body is all about. Well, we've moved into a whole new energy field. That's what's basically happened. And so, of course, everything is affected. And basically how it's being affected is we're becoming more consciousness. Some have even said we're turning on that 97% of junk DNA <laughs> that they identified. It was never junk to begin with. <laughs> but see, see how the language of the body is definitely part of that junk DNA. Because it's, this is what they didn't want us to know about ourselves. Well, the whole genome project only does the amino acid levels, which is the first 3%, I think. And there's so much more. I mean, you've seen the Greg Braden videos where the three Chinese doctors just sit there and breathe and, and pulse and huff, huff, yes. and they make the, you know, in front of your eyes, you see the kidney. Yeah, you know, it's a bladder you know. tumor that disappears or something. We have that technology. We have the ability wow. to move the big stones. We were doing this thousands of years ago when our masters walked the earth and taught us how we are of inestimable value, especially when we come together as spirits. So mm. long as we're not confused. That's right. <laughs> wow. Isn't this fantastic? This is, I'm blown away. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And oh, wow, thank you for getting because in touch. Is, um, it's wonderful to hear the other more practical. Heather's been very good at sort of giving, she's very in touch with Source, very obviously she's taken direction straight, you know, from an energetic standpoint. It's good to hear it from people who've brought it down to a more scientific level, which people, I think, in our 3D reality still need to have a grasp of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the direction everything's moving, and it's a, it's a beautiful direction, as long as it's really based on the spiritual, natural laws of energy. Yeah, 
Absolutely. All right, look, I, I, we're running out of time, and uh, I just want to thank you to uh, Dean and Kirsty for coming on and speaking to us tonight. This has been one of the most interesting interviews I've ever done, without a doubt. And I look forward to getting this up on our website. And thank you very much for your contribution to Freedom Central's Information Archives. And we will definitely speak again. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Speak soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.